In the wild, you can find various types of aircraft, ranging from the smallest, surviving on the midlife crisis of humans, to night hunters, and even massive whales. However, among these aircraft, there are also more endangered species. Some are threatened by their limited numbers, while others suffer from the neglect of the developers at Eagle Dynamics. And today, we will focus on the latter case. In DCS, most of new pilots are introduced to extremely elite equipment, so much so that one of the planes doesn't even fire weapons, and the other one has almost entirely been forgotten. But what you should not forget is that the SC-47, yes, THE SC-47, now has a Discord, so feel free to join. But let's continue. SU-25, Frogfoot. The reason the Frogfoot is often the first aircraft that most players fly is the fact that DCS is supposedly free to play, making it the only modern aircraft available to every pilot at no cost, along with the Caucasus map. Thus, it serves as the first impression for beginners in DCS. And even though a few things have changed with the latest Flaming Cliffs 2024 update, which we talked about last time, the Frogfoot has reportedly received some updates. Nevertheless, in several aspects, it is still neglected by the developers. Together with the A version, it remains the only aircraft in the entire DCS catalog that lacks a professional flight model. So I asked the community for their opinion on this. We've gathered some interesting statistics, but we'll save that for later. One question I would pose first is whether the Su-25 is even a good choice for a beginner aircraft. Let us not forget that the Su-25 didn't become a free plane by choice of Eagle Dynamics, but because it was one of the oldest planes in a game without an update, and ED just kept it in. Since it's purely an air-to-ground aircraft with minimal air-to-air -air capabilities, it means that new pilots don't get a chance to try out beyond visual range combat or classic dogfights. Worse yet, if they try, highly likely, it won't be some Top Gun Maverick Cobra maneuver. In the other words, they won't earn their wings. In fact, they are far more likely to lose them after a high G maneuver. After all, most people who want to try DCS probably want to shoot down something more agile than an airliner. And in some cases, something less of a war crime. Of course, a fair question is, which aircraft could take over this role? After discussions within the community, a few options emerged. For example, the F-5E Tiger II is a relatively simple aircraft, but it doesn't offer many air-to-air -air weapons. The only viable option would be to upgrade the F-5 to a more advanced but still hit However, as we know, ED doesn't like to work that doesn't directly generate income, even though it could lead to more modules purchased. Just look at the dynamic campaign, something DCS has lacked for a long time. But since it can't be packaged into a module, it will take quite some time before we get it. Actually, we are more likely to get a Putin module first, since at least that could be packaged and sold for $60 or 9 billion rubles. Personally, I think the best option is the already existing 14-day free trial where anyone can pick a plane and a map and try out DCS in a full 14 days. It's not ideal, but ED won't give up on their for fidelity modules. And the 14-day free trial is something I would highly recommend if you're new to DCS. For learning the basics of DCS, the SN25 is sufficient, or at least it would be if ED hadn't completely forgotten about it. As mentioned earlier, the SN25 is the only official plane in DCS without a professional flight model. The textures look more suited for a Windows 7 desktop wallpaper than for a cutting-edge combat flight simulator. Even the light bounces off them, like stray bullets from a Kalashnikov. But it's just the exterior. Cockpit textures are far more important, so one would expect a better quality there. Oh lord, that hasn't gone well. Oh god. Well at least, that's not the cockpit view luckily. And luckily, the cockpit view isn't much better. But if you don't plan on looking at the lower part of cockpit, where all the useless things like the TV display, weapon selection, HSI or landing your liver are located, then it's usable. Someone was apparently so exhausted that the hut and buttons on the upper part of the cockpit are actually of decent quality, but the lower you look, the more disastrous it becomes. Like look at this tube here, I don't even know what that's for, but even if it, but even if it was labeled, I probably wouldn't be able to read it. So just to sum up. All the planes in the game have the DCS professional model trademark and they promote it using the only plane in the game that lacks a professional flight model. That does make very little sense somehow. 
Also, DCS is the best looking fight combat simulator graphically. Yet once again, someone at Eagle Dynamics decided to promote that claim with an aircraft featuring 2005 level textures. A questionable decision. So the feeling a player gets is that DCS offers a pointless game with realistic graphics and no one intends to fix anything within this century. And that's a shame because DCS actually offers a pointless game with realistic graphics and indeed no one plans to fix anything in this century, but they would miss the fact that despite all the unfinished content, the war with South America and having to pretend the Korean map exists, there are surprising a lot of people who, well, just want to fly. However, the question remains, what should be done with the Su-25? It's been in the game for a long time and in my opinion it deserves to be the first aircraft for every new pilot, at least out of a tradition. Who will save the Su-25? If we want a better future for the Su-25, we need to pressure Eagle Dynamics. And only the community can do that. Speaking of community, as of right now 156 members of the community are willing to share their opinions and looking at the statistic. Wait a minute! The most alarming thing actually is that 19% of the entire player base of DCS only plays combined arms. But besides this horrible, gruesome discovery, what I'm afraid can only be described as a war crime, majority of community, that being 73%, agrees that SU-25 is neglected. 14% of these people think that nothing should be done about it. These people apparently have no heart and empathy towards the SU-25T, Frogfoot. And then the last 18% thinks it's not neglected. Nonetheless, everybody has their opinion. The rest I'm leaving up to you in the comment section. Since the Flaming Caliphs 2024 was the best chance for ED to fix the su 25 t and we have not even gotten updated loading screen pictures, who will save the su 25 t That is a question that remains unanswered, even by the end of today's video. At least I provided you with all the data from both community and game itself to remain informed about the matter. If we want better SU-25, a revolution might be necessary.